Good morning, dear friends, and greetings in Jesus' name. Nice to be with you for these very few minutes before we begin our day and its activities. Seek the Lord first, and so we shall do that. Today I would like to meditate uh, from a passage that Paul wrote to Ephesians Church, uh, chapter 3, verses 14 to 21. Now, to save time, we will not read it, but I encourage you to read after the meditation. And uh, I will tell you what this passage contains. This passage is Apostle Paul's prayer for the believers. Now, all of us pray for each other, but very often we don't remember and we don't even think of praying according to God's will for the believers. What is God's will? If you want to know how to pray for one another as believers, you read the prayers of the Apostle Paul recorded in his epistles. Now this particular passage in Ephesians chapter 3 verses 14 to 21 is one of the most powerful and important prayers that Paul prayed for the believers. There are a few points that we can note. This prayer contains, first of all, it is a prayer for spiritual power. Verse 16. Spiritual power. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. What an important prayer that is. The might of the Holy Spirit in the inner man is the need of every believer. And without this power, if with your inner, uh, in your inner being, your inner man, uh, you cannot be an overcomer, you cannot be victorious. So it is important for us to pray for this need. This is the secret of our real influence for God. When you are strengthened in your inside person, that is the secret of being a useful and a, a person and a blessing to others and uh, an influence for God. And the second thing you will notice in that prayer is the indwelling presence of Christ. Verse 17. Verse 17. So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. That is a very important thing. What is Christianity after all? Christianity is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christianity is not reciting Lord's Prayer. Christianity is not... Uh, going to church. Christianity is not reciting or reading Psalm 23 every day. No. Christianity is Christ dwelling in you and Christ dwelling in me. That makes a person a Christian. And uh, this is something very, very important. And uh, there can be no spiritual power where Christ is not honored. If you want to have the spiritual power within you, you need to honor God and place him where he needs to be placed, which is your own heart. And make him Lord of your life. If Christ dwells in us, then the spirit will take the things that are Christ's and show them through us to the world. And that's how you become a blessing to your fellow believers, to your brothers and sisters in Christ. And to make sure that you pray for this. And thirdly, he prayed stability of character. Verse 17, again, the rest. And I pray that you, 
being rooted and established in love rooted there are two words used rooted and established these two expressions remind you of two things rooted that word reminds you of a strong tall tree its stability its firmness through storms and rains and winter and summer in all season it survive why because it's so rooted its roots go down deep and that is the secret you need to have your root going deeper in god's word and in the holy spirit and so that is that is the secret and um, i pray that you will experience that that is that makes you a stable person stability and um, rooted and grounded in love the downward growth of the roots of our being are to be in the rich fruitful soil of god's love so please remember that it and the upward growth of the believer the established that word reminds you of a building the main thing about the building is its a foundation and uh, and and the upward growth of the building Uh, of a character is to be based also in love colossians chapter 2 verse 7 says colossians 2 7 rooted and built up in him strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness you see how you can be stable how can be how can you be steady in your christian life how can you live a stabilized strong life always growing upward as your root goes downward and these are the two things that give makes you stable and fourthly we notice in this prayer enlarged comprehension in verse 19 uh, ephesians chapter 3 verse 19 it says here and to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of god it will take the comprehension of all the believers of all ages to find out the breadth length and depth and height of that love of christ who can explain or describe or who can even comprehend the love of god as one songist says you consider the sky as the scroll and then you consider the the branch of every tree on planet earth as pen and consider the sea all the seas and rivers as ink and all the scribes all humanity are the scribes sit down and start writing explaining describing the love of god and the song is to goes on to say the scroll may be filled and no more space and the ink may dry and the pen is ex- ex- is exhausted and the scribes ran out of words still the love of god is not fully explained or described 
and that is the love of god my brothers and sisters it is with that love that he loved you and loved me when you think of this how can you resist such love how can you resist jesus anymore and i pray that you will be able to comprehend at least a small little portion of god's love and if all of us will possess a very small percentage of that love within us i tell you the world will be a better place this love of christ is said to pass all knowledge it is a great discovery to find out the immeasurable magnitude of that love and i pray that you will strive to understand at least a small portion of christ loves us with this love beyond any measure and beyond any comprehension that is the love of god oh i pray that the holy spirit will make that love real to you and you will be so fall in love with jesus with that love inseparable and the fifth thing that the apostle paul prayed for the believers at a complete and abiding satisfaction again verse 19 he say and to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of god and again who can fathom who can measure the 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 the, the fullness of god God fills the heavens and the earth and the seas and everything in them. How can you comprehend this love? It is beyond us that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. You know think of the gospel according to St John chapter 1 verse 16. Out of his fullness we have all received grace in place of grace already given grace upon grace out of his fullness each individual on planet earth can receive that grace grace upon grace again grace but still you cannot exhaust the grace of god that is his grace and apostles of prayer is that we will be filled with all the fullness of god our prayer must be lord increase our faith that we may rise to the divine standard of fullness and with this prayer let us begin this day Lord we need the holy spirit even to understand 1 millionth of the measure of your love and your fullness may the holy spirit continue to guide us and lead to that bless my brothers and sisters young and old in jesus name amen live with the realization today and god's presence and his grace enables you be filled with his fullness amen